overall, a good first impression with some decent artwork. Let's ruin that on the first page, shall we? I'm gonna leave this page still for a moment, just so you can take this all in. Truly the stuff of comic legends, my friends. The blank purple gradient background, the woman who appears to be talking to the space directly above the other guy's head, the man front and center who appears to have massive eyes that are also slightly cross-eyed, and then there's the title of the issue. Oh, the cheese. The cheese is thick in this title, to the point where you'd swear it was a joke. But no, this comic plays it straight. The evil taste of revenge. The next three pages are all 12 panels each and manage to fit a surprising amount of dialogue in them, albeit most of it is just them repeating themselves over and over. Batman scolds himself as he realizes he's being completely insane with Dick. What am I doing to this kid? Who the hell do I think I am? You're the goddamn... Screw it, you know where that was going. Oh hell, just look at him. Look at that adorable little face. Aww. Stop it. No doubts. Remember the mission. Nothing matters except the mission. He doesn't matter. You don't matter. Nothing matters except the mission. Honestly, is he speaking in haikus now or something? Of course he matters! This is ridiculous! In fact, this guy is so much not like Batman, I'm not going to refer to him as Batman anymore. In the original text review, I called him Bino, or Batman in name only. Well, that's not nearly adequate enough for this psycho. I hereby dub him Crazy Steve. The students, who all look like they belong in the 1950s, are we sure this was made in 1986? Discuss what he meant, one asking what a worm algorithm is. It's a term used in computer programming. A worm is a pulse placed into a program that causes it to self-destruct. You can write a piece of code to make your program self-destruct? Neato! Oh, those poor fools! Don't they know they're going up against the awesome might of Snowflame? And that Snowflame charm quickly ramps it up after the offer and the chance to give up. Give up the ultimate exhilaration, the divine rapture, the euphoria of electricity that now surges through every molecule of my body? You know, that feeling of euphoria he gets right before the drug wears off and all? To enhance the rich insanity of Snowflame, he buries his face in a whole bunch of cocaine and just starts snorting like mad. Ah, may this fire burn everlasting! Now I am a true god! Bow down before the Snowflame! He is cuckoo for cocaine! Meanwhile, in Gotham, some cops come across the aftermath of Batman taking down some human traffickers. They're not dead, but Batman branded one of them with his logo. I'm trying a new thing in an attempt to go viral. Everyone do the Bat Brand Challenge! The group explores the place, discovering monitors that observe various parallel universes, doorways leading to places like the desert the Exiles were first recruited, but most importantly, they discover a hallway full of bodies. The bodies of fallen exiles and Weapon X members, including Thunderbird, Sunfire, and this dude who had a buzzsaw-shaped Captain America shield stuck in his stomach. I mean, for crying out loud, they just left that in there! Ugh, I don't like the Time Broker's healthcare plan. Superman flies off to deal with the terraforming device on the Indian Ocean, while the military goes to deal with the one in Metropolis. Also, I guess the militaries for countries bordering the Indian Ocean are all on vacation or something. Anyway, enjoy this shot of screaming people being flung into the air and then back down again. I can't tell if that was intended to be comedic or just dark, but either way... Why? Zod heads to the scout ship to retrieve the Genesis Chamber that will be necessary for creating the new Kryptonian population. Pay no attention to the man with a book in his ass. All of a sudden, there's an explosion! Someone's gonna pay for that faulty timer. While you're at it, dude, you may want to invest in a better explosive. Just look at that, it barely knocked over a table. The guy is gonna become Black Web? It's not the explosion that's hurting him, it's because of the 50 friggin' syringes sticking out of him! I mean, just, oh my lord, look at this. How many friggin' needles did he have sitting on that table? Were they even on the table? They all got blown out in just the right way so they'd all stab this guy all over his body. 
Dude, you ever think about, I don't know, injecting the contents into a test tube and then safely disposing of the needle? It'd probably be a lot safer than keeping those things just sitting around waiting for someone to trip on them. Crap, the safety record of this place has got to be hell. OSHA's gonna have a fit over this. And hey, wait a second, did the explosion burn off his shirt? Well, no, we see the shirt later, but it's opened up. The explosion unbuttoned his shirt. And yeah, that's our title character who just got turned into a pincushion. What I especially love so far about this comic is the character development. In only two pages, we already know so much about him. For example, he's a scientist. Also, he's... So anyway... Superman, meanwhile, fights some CGI sand tentacles that apparently this one has to guard it, but not the one in Metropolis. Still, things are not much better there, as the gravity field generated by the device repels their missiles, and the fighters themselves end up crashing and doing just as much damage to the area. Holocaust attacks, but Hyperion is too powerful even for him. He says he deliberately put Holocaust on the team to make things tougher for the Exiles, but he just ended up working with them instead. And since Holocaust is living energy, Hyperion smashes his containment bubble and snorts the energy of Holocaust into him. I see the Ultimate Warrior was teaching people how to use Skronk as a superpower. We cut over to stately Wayne Manor, where Bruce is informed by Alfred that they got a tape in the mail. Well, put it on! At least they sent Beta, not VHS. Bruce threw a big party in 2016 when they officially declared VHS dead. Vindication, Alfred! Vindication! What the hell do you even care for, Bruce? You're rich. You can afford both. Maybe it's one of those movies, sir. I don't know, Alfred. I kind of like Wes Anderson movies. I've never seen one. Porn was more of a VHS thing anyway. Dirty, stinking VHS. I heard they had rock and roll music videos on them, too. Ram wrestles Snowflame into the swimming pool, which I'm sure is meant to extinguish his flames, even though I can't see any evidence of Snowflame's powers actually being flame-related. When they get out of the pool, his strength returns, but Ram punches him into a shed, which turns out to be the chemical shed. Said chemical shed subsequently explodes! Snowflame! <laughs> Can anyone explain to me why the highly flammable chemical shed was owned by the guy whose powers apparently involved bursting into flames, and furthermore, why you'd put it next to the pool? Let's see if you bleed like a man! I am a man. I am a man! Yeah. Huh.